Hi, I'm Oscar van Deventer, and this is Oscar's continuous variable transmission. It has always been my dream to uh, make a continuous variable uh, transmission, and finally, finally, I found a way of doing this. And as you may know from continuously variable transmissions, most of them they work based on friction. For instance, a belt with conical uh, plates that uh, move the belt out or in or with uh, balls, the one in bicycles, where you tilt the ball and that way achieve uh, a, a continuous variable transmission. But all of those use uh, friction and this one doesn't. Uh, and what you see here is a one-way bearing. So it works like uh, a regular bearing in the sense that uh, you can turn the uh, turn them smoothly in one direction, however as soon as you want to turn in the other direction it blocks. And it has virtually no backlash, so um, it's like a ratchet, but then a perfect ratchet because it doesn't rattle and it's going zero uh, force in one direction and a lot of force in the other direction. So this is what's uh, inside here, and as you could already see from the mechanism, and let me show you a top view, um, there are three pistons that are moving up and down. And what these uh, three pistons are doing is they are pushing a set of six gears that are in here. And it's uh, almost impossible uh, to show you, but uh, you need to believe me that there are six gears. And those six gears, they have uh, six of these uh, bearings. So um, these pistons, they are driven by... Um, this gearing mechanism and uh, this is what is at the inside. So um, what you see here is uh, when it rotates then the little circle goes uh, around and around and it drives the pistons. You've also noticed the little chain here and the little chain is what positions this thing. So now we have the maximum uh, amplitude, but when we move the chain a little bit in, like this, this is all the way in, so now when we turn there is no transmission and we can continuously move this in and out, so in and out. So let me demonstrate this uh, same uh, for the mechanism here and I have put some screws there. So now we have a very slow motion and this takes uh, a bit of a while because I need to uh, pull on the chains and uh, make sure that uh, I don't force uh, things too much but uh, this way I can make the amplitude of the thing larger. Okay, and now I fix everything with the screws and now when I'm turning, you see the things goes at a much uh, higher speed. One of the things that you may not have noticed is how continuous this wheel goes. Because you know those pistons, they make a sign motion. They go faster, slower, back, etc. So what I've done is I have made uh, some sort of, well, hexagonal gears and they make sure that whenever one of the pistons engages with its gear that it goes at a continuous speed. So whenever I turn the input gear at a continuous speed then every time the uh, piston that engages makes its gear go at a continuous speed and they take over at the right moment. So that explains why um, this one goes at, the, at such a constant speed and we see now it goes uh, really fast, but uh, let me uh, do some uh, more tuning. Let's uh, make it a bit slower. So I unscrew at one side and I turn the screw more at the other side. And there we are. So, and now I've brought it back to almost zero. And you see when I'm turning, it's uh, turning only very very slowly and you see the uh, amplitude of the pistons is uh, minimal. 
So I have uh, achieved uh, my goal with all of these uh, parts, uh, 3D printed parts, some screws, a little chain, and of course the one-way bearing. I've made a continuous variable uh, transmission. It's uh, quite bulky. At the moment it's just a piece of kinetic uh, art uh, that's enjoyable to play with. And my question to you is, uh, this particular design, would it have any useful application? Thank you for watching.